Good morning, everyone. Uh, I would like to first acknowledge uh, my appreciation of you all showing up and, and sharing this morning with me. I don't take it for granted. Um, and let's start the content and let's try to have some fun. So tonight, tonight, today, we'll talk about mono versus multi-repo in the context of CI pipelines. So once we understood what those concepts are, the pros and cons, the next thing is maybe there's another way. Maybe there's an optimal way to enjoy the best of both worlds. And like every other solution, I always try to think, how is it applicable, how is it maintainable, and how is it easy? And before every talk, I always like to say like my main goal. My main goal is that at least one person here will say, that's kind of easy, I can do that. I can introduce this into my dev cycle and my dev organization. But first, let's talk about my favorite topic. Me. <laughs> so my name is Michael Sego. I'm a 30-year-old software engineer from Tel Aviv. I love Django and I love cats. Not related, but both correct. Um, I've been a software developer for the past six years uh, back in Tel Aviv. And I kind of moved between industries trying to find the place where I feel the most impact and well, just happiness. And I found the most happiness actually in the cybersecurity industry. The cybersecurity industry allowed me to do something uh, that felt really right, but I didn't really understood it. Currently, I introduce cybersecurity, basically security measures into dev teams, into their dev cycle, and allow them to focus on what they're good at. You want to focus on your business logic. What you do, I take care of the security. And that kind of mindset also gave birth to today's talk. I think we can all agree to a certain extent, you don't start your day thinking, how am I gonna improve my CI infrastructure? Ooh, I wanna add this feature, I wanna do that. If you are, please talk to me, I'd love to see that passion. Most people wanna set it once, forget it, and even when there's problems, try to put them to the side. That's not the right way to handle a CI. So let's take that mindset of trying to make things work better for all of us. But first, let's talk about the never-ending debate, mono versus multi-repo. Just a show of hands, who's a mono-repo kind of developer? Okay, you're outnumbered, that's good. <laughs> so this is a never-ending debate, and it won't end because of one simple truth. They're both great solutions. It just depends on your tech stack, depends on your team, depends on your culture. You could use both and get amazing results. But in the context of CI, there's really key differentiations. When we use a monorepo, just a quick overview, centralized code management, easy refactoring, team share the same culture. Problem is when everyone works on the same files, um, conflicts will be a daily endeavor. And single tagging for a whole code base kind of makes versioning and refactoring for different clients, different versions of your app, a little bit harder than it should. In multi-repo, independent deployments, independent versioning, autonomous work, you wanna enable your dev teams to express themselves and do things their way. Problem, for example, libraries update overhead and more silo teams. Yeah, that's a new word for me as well. But in CI context, monorepo allows us to have one single file no code duplication, very easy to go in, understand what's going on, and run with it. While in multi-repo, we'll have to do a single file or system per repo and kind of reuse the same stuff time and time again. The overhead becomes taxing very quickly. Another way to look at it is via this graph. In the monorepo, all of the different services adhere to the same CI pipeline, while in multi-repo, Everyone has its own infrastructure. But what if there was another way? Maybe there's some way to enjoy the flexibility of multi-repo CI with the one-stop shop of monorepo. Well, there is. It's called centralized CI. And I'm sure you've seen versions of these solutions. You've heard the versions. Well, today we're gonna see a very lightweight, easy to implement version using GitHub and Python, obviously. And the main thing I want all of you to always keep in mind, I'm gonna show you a very 
uh, an instance of all this stack. But you can use your imagination and your skills to expand it and do amazing things with this infrastructure. So why should you even care? Why should you want centralized CI? Because their current solutions probably work wherever you work and they do the job. The centralized CI will kind of allow us to do best of both worlds, which is done by adhering to this simple principle of decoupling, decoupling the checks from the code. There is no real reason that the checks should know or should share the same space with your code. And by this decoupling, we get abilities like to enforce styling via linter, implement security checks, I'll expand on that later, and allow both tailor-made checks and cross-repo checks, and that's like the essence of it. Okay. The centralized CI overview basically talks about our SCM, uh, GitHub, Bitbucket, GitLab, your developers, yourselves, are working, doing your day-to-day -day jobs. Events are flown everywhere. For example, we're listening to PR events. Those PR events will get transmitted to some backend that will analyze them, verify them, decide what you want to do with them. And they will decide which CI jobs we want to trigger. Now, everything we're going to see later always go back to this differentiation. We have a place where code happens. PRs are written, comments are added, things are ad edited. They should not be aware that there's a whole CI framework behind them. That's the whole beauty of it. Now we have this backend, the brain of this whole process, that analyzes those events, verifies your tokens, see what needs to happen. And you can very clearly uh, just understand, so if I have this place, this centralized brain, I can probably do very cool things with it. I can start to analyze uh, how much time does everything take, stats, maybe de uh, per developer kind of stats, monitoring your own uh, CI and uh, PR activity is a very uh, recommended practice, especially as your team and your company grows. And in the end, we trigger a CI job in a completely separate repo that contains nothing but GitHub workflows or CI checks, really depends on the platform we're talking about. So now we're going to go about the same thing, only in a specific GitHub instance. So we have some GitHub organization uh, with the great naming repository A. Repository A user opens some PR on GitHub. That uh, our GitHub app will send said event via webhook to our backend. That backend will first and foremost verify the token, it's valid, it's in the right format, then analyze what happened in this said PR, which kind of files were changed, what was the change, and then decide, okay, I'm going to trigger this, that, and the third check. That is sent back to GitHub in a dispatch workflow, that's the name of the thing, and it will trigger a workflow in the central CI repository. So again, the whole thing is we have three different layers. First layer is your actual code. Second layer is the whole GitHub talks to your uh, CI brain that decides what to run. And then the actual running of the checks is in a completely third location. Okay. So what do we need for our demo so we can see the whole thing and get a little bit more excited? So we'll create a GitHub application that will monitor those webhook events and send them to our decided destination. We create some simple backend listen to PRs and use Angrok as a tunneling uh, service to our, well, my server here. Um, I wouldn't be a very good uh, security aware developer if I didn't just briefly talk about when you're introducing some sort of uh, application into your uh, dev cycle. Try to give it as few permissions as possible and be very much aware to what you're giving it. Uh, the amount of attacks and issues that derive from this very problem are too, too many to count. And I always suggest go over the fine print, even though it's in dark mode, it's a little bit harder. Uh, and for just uh, more tech-wise what you need, you'll define a webhook URL, which is basically where your uh, private server is hosted. You need to define a webhook secret. The 
find the repository permissions. Um, um, actions and checks are two different concepts in GitHub, but they're important. Action is the actual brain of what's running. So for example, our linter run flake eight uh, is the action. But the check is basically the notification of the result of said check in the appropriate repo. Because if we're running the logic in this centralized CI location, uh, it doesn't really make sense that we will go there every time we open the PR to see what happened with my PR, especially when so many people are opening PRs at the same time. So for us to notify the original repo, hey, this is what happened with your action, there's a check. That's just the, the words. So let's build a centralized linter. Uh, this is our EuroPython demo uh, organization, and the three layers we talked about are presented here by three different repos. Uh, the test repo is just our code base, some basic Python stuff, uh, hello Dublin. Our CI is the brain part. We'll dive into that to just to show you what it means, uh, but nothing too major. And the third and most interesting part is a central CI, which is a This. this is the repo that contains all the different checks. As you can see, there's just a readme file and GitHub workflows with two different checks. Um, I don't know how well you know the syntax and everything, but we'll go over it real quickly because I know it could be quite taxing. This is the flow that we will trigger from the brain part of our service. As you saw in the repo, all it has is YAML files and simple readme. It has no idea the infrastructure it runs on, what it's about to run, the code. It doesn't care. It's a very simple dumbed down check. And it gets all its relevant data from the dispatch workflow event from our backend. So what we're going to do here and you're going to about to see in a moment is we're going to explore GitHub Actions. We're going to create a check. That's that notifier we talked about. Check out the original repository, run lint with flake eight, and according to success or failure, get notified. In the brain part of it, we're going to SRC main. Basically, we have one public endpoint. Yeah, I try to play with it a little bit. And that public endpoint will trigger a handle PR event. That handle PR event will package the necessary info. I prefer to look at it from here. This is the handle PR event. As you can see, we create this client payload that also talks about the owner and the relevant repo and has all the data we got back from the open PR event, packages it, here, I just hard-coded, decided, run this check, CI YAML. This dumb line is basically the essence of your potential. And this is what I want you to take. I just de decided, run linter, I don't care. But according to your use and your needs, and we'll dive into a more complex example, you can make this line into a whole new service that decides which check should run. And you could really control your CI. And that's the point of this monorepo versus multi-repo whole debate. Because here I basically allow you, just like in monorepo, one place to define everything. That's the power. But just like multi-repo, this area is your place to get a little bit smarter, add and introduce new things. For example, you go over which files were changed during the PR. Oh, I see some Python files, some JS files, even uh, a Terraform file. So I will run security checks uh, according to those files. I'll run Bandit, I'll run Kicks, whatever security measures you want to use. And this is where basically the potential becomes infinite. So let's see this whole thing in action. In the end, I, <laughs> it's not gonna be so dramatic, but I think you'll see the value. This is my test repo, hello world. I wanna crash the CI's linter. 
course, too many blank blanks, create a PR. Thank you. In the background, through Ngrok to our server, events are flown, handled, and this is the only annoying part. It takes a little bit of time till everything clicks. But, and I go back to our free layers all the time. I want to go back to that concept so it simulates better. We see now the check, the linter check. Run, and we got a response. But where all free layers come into place? Well, this is the code layer, the SRC. Someone opened the PR, and he got notified of the result regarding the PR. He has no idea about the check, has no idea about the tech, no idea about the infrastructure. He just opened the PR and got immediate value. There's the GitHub application that ta talks to the backend. That whole area has no idea where those checks are stored, what's going to happen, what's the next step. It just analyzes and sends said checks. And the checks eventually that run, I'll show you exactly where the checks themselves ran. Sorry, I always confuse the two. See, this happened just seconds ago. This is the action, this is the logic, this is the linter part of it. What we saw in the PR is the check, the notification. And we'll enter the action and we'll see what's exactly the problem. Okay. So we just went through a very simple cycle that I think we can all see the value and how we can use it and how it will impact all. So. An important part that was shown and I want to dive into because it's really important in any sort of solution you're trying to introduce into a dev team. If I didn't, con if I didn't convey the results via check, which was very easy, I would just run the action, I would even have less permissions and make everything a lot easier. What would be the biggest problem? I would make the solution just uncomfortable. And there's no point in a good solution if it's not easy to use and easy to maintain for the end user. I try to talk with my user in the most friendly way possible via chat in your respective PR. Always try to think eventually how said person will use what you're developing. And this is the more complete flow that adheres to that principle. We have the SCM that talks to the backend, talks to the CI, but the CI reports the outcome all the way back to the original repository. So once we modify the CI job to create an update checks, this is a more complete flow. We have a repository checkout. We create the check, we run the linter, and then we update said check. So I've alluded a couple of times regarding this whole, I'm gonna show you a very basic example of it. How could it be used for better, uh, more creative ways? Well, we use this infrastructure or maybe a more uh, robust version of it in our day-to-day -day work back at JIT. I'm not gonna talk too much about what the company does. That's not the point of the convention. But we analyze each PR, its contents, and understand, okay, which security measures do I need to use? And we give our clients and our developers ourselves during our cycle never-ending security measures using this exact framework. And of course, as I said, we convey that via a simple uh, PR comment, which I think is a very friendly way that we all are accustomed to. So uh, thank you so much for your time. I hope this was short, sweet, and gave you some uh, value. Um, before I finish, I just want to say one last point regarding this whole talk. Um, however you apply the CI, CD, and other infrastructures of your code, don't always try to choose the lane that you saw in some medium post or what happened before you. Try to see if there's a way you can use the best of both worlds, and you'll be quite surprised to see it's a lot easier than you think. 
might not be one click, it might not be one day of work, but this whole infrastructure took us uh, one and a half days to implement, and it's still used to this day, of course, at scale, with much more uh, abilities and DB that continuously analyzes the results and gives us real great feedback. So uh, just to package the whole thing, if you are intrigued about how we do things at JIT, if you're intrigued about cybersecurity, if you're intrigued about other CI CD pipeline solutions, I'll be here the whole day and I'd love to talk. I kind of, I prefer people over code and I'd just love to meet each and every one of you. Um, if you're inspired, you have questions, I'll be here all day. Um, that's it, short and sweet. Thank you so much for your time. Do we, do we have any remote questions, just quickly? No? So if, uh, can we just use the mic here, please? Yeah, a great talk and especially uh, great advice regarding the Medium article. Okay. Uh, uh, my question is, uh, in this infrastructure, yeah, thank you, it's a great outline, awesome. How do you cater to different requirements of those repos? Like one, one repo may require, uh, let's say, more resources on CI, like so much beefier CI box yeah. uh, than other repos. Yeah, so first and foremost, thank you so much for the question. Uh, what's your name? Pablo. Pablo, okay, thank you so much. Um, Pablo brought a very interesting question regarding, I put everything in the same organization while clearly they have different needs. I've done that just for the demo's sake. In our real operational, the area that runs the actual checks themselves, the logic part of it, is in a completely different organization. They have a signature GitHub token that allows them to communicate, and it has its own uh, threshold and amount of checks it can run. So they don't really uh, affect one another. Uh, but as you saw, maybe I'll show you later, uh, in the YAML itself, we define all the infrastructure it needs. It runs it once and uh, kills it at the end. Uh, hopefully it answers and gives you more context. Hi, uh, Christian. Uh, you talked about uh, <coughs> GitHub in, 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 uh, in particular. But what about uh, other uh, uh, providers like, like Bitbucket, GitLab, or? Yeah. Uh, again, thank you so much for participation. This is the fun part of the talk. Um, this entire flow is applicable in all the big free SCMs. It's slightly different. It requires uh, a little bit more uh, work on it. We've done the exact same thing in GitLab for a specific uh, POC we wanted maybe to switch over. Um, but yeah, um, it's applicable in all free. I just wanted to show it specifically in GitLab because it's a, the easiest and most uh, popular. Uh, thanks for the talk and um, and your energy throughout was was really good. Um, I can definitely see uh, the kind of well, why you might need this, especially in like a mono repo uh, microservices uh, type setting. Um, I think there's maybe uh, some benefits that you have when you have the CI designs coupled to the code, like you know exactly uh, which what the configuration was for the CI for a specific uh, snapshot of, of, of what it was run against. Um, do you think that's always worthwhile to, uh, the, that cost is always worthwhile um, with this kind of setup? Um, first, again, thank you so much for the participation. That's the fun part of the talk. Wonderful question, and th the simple answer is yes. And the even more simple answer uh, is as you saw, we configured in our CI checks all the different checks. If you want to do a very specific check that's tailor-made to a specific service, et cetera, et cetera, you can configure a very specific YAML file. You'll need to do some ugly code back in the brain part of it to choose where to run, but uh, fine. Sometimes not everything is best practices, um, but we do it uh, actually quite constantly. Um, just as a side note, uh, back at JIT, so we orchestrate open source security tools. Um, all those security tools in the end have their own infrastructure and tests and they need to adhere to some CI. So at the CI, central CI, we have like specific checks that are relevant to each one of those uh, tools. You can't always have the same test for everyone 
so yeah, we have very specific checks for a good reason. Hey, uh, yeah, first of all, thanks for the great talk, very interesting technique. Um, I'm just wondering um, how you, for example, scope the deploys of the backend for managing the CI. So I could imagine where this becomes a single point of failure for your entire test and deploy pipeline, where you say you block your entire company's deploys because you updated this uh, CI backend uh, and made some mistake, whatever. So I guess two questions. Uh, how do you test the CI backend, backend itself? Does it use itself to do that as well? And um, yeah, do you have some ideas on how it like to do it? maybe like have deploys per team so that at least you don't take other CI pipelines down by doing that? Okay, first good question, then interesting uh, suggestion. Thank you so much for participating. Um, yeah, the CI could become a bottleneck. It's one of the few joys of working in small teams. Um, uh, the CI itself uh, checks itself. It's not a gr great way. We need to find a better solution for it. But yeah, we have sometimes this very weird thing where the CI fails. We don't take it for granted. We go over the logs and like, oh, something wrong happened. Uh, a great way to keep it static is first and foremost, all the different uh, tools we use in the CI. Use specific versions, not like latest stuff like that. I assume all of us are at some point of our careers got burned over something like that. Um, but it doesn't, of course, replace the basic testing, like unit testing, integration, end-to-end, -end, all those things happen. Um, but yeah, um, we need to do a better job of doing CI more resilient. And regarding your question of making different pipelines for different teams, um, we currently don't do it, but it would be very easily applicable. We just need to create a new GitHub app. It, it will adhere to a different CI server, but it will eventually report to the CM to the, uh, the same CI checks uh, code base. Um, I'm actually kind of excited to maybe try it out with my team. It's a good idea. But like where I would use it, if you're part of a really big team that has different products, maybe don't want the same checks, or maybe you have one team that's a Python-led team, woo, and the other Java team, boom. So you want to have different checks for them. So that's yeah. maybe where I would use such a thing, but yeah. a great idea. Cool. Yeah, awesome, thank you. Thank you. Hi, thank you very much for your talk. Um, we are fully multi-repo and that works great for us, but very occasionally we have two PRs that sort of affect the same thing in two different repos. And then CI suddenly is an absolute nightmare for us because the one tool uses the master version of one and the other uses the master version of other while they really should test against the both PRs. Do you have a solution for that in your current setup to test two PRs on two different repos simultaneously? Um, I'm sorry, I should probably answer quickly. Um, I actually don't see how that problem will arise in this architecture because basically if I'm if I misunderstood you please correct me. You have two different PRs, two different repos whatever that run pretty much the same kind of uh, check but in the end both web webhooks will be sent to the CI uh, backend will decide okay we want to check we want to run check x they both will run the same check x and you'll get the same result. Uh, no no the problem is that these two repos use each other as dependency, basically. So oh, one is no, a, no, 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 and no. then, and. <laughs> <laughs> Stop that immediately. <laughs> it's a, sometimes you don't get around it. Usually you get around it. Yeah, as we said previously, the world isn't always uh, best practices. Uh -huh. um, I would love to sit with you and try to solve it by the end yes. of the day. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, um, the kind of checks we've shown, I'm sorry, just give the focus a little bit around. The checks we've shown are more cross checks, like for example, linter. The whole, the whole purpose of linter is to make sure everyone adhered to the same styling guidelines or very specific checks like security checks. Uh, we don't really use our CI to run the abilities of repo A on repo B, vice versa. If you have a specific ability there, I would try to extract it to an own, uh, for example, here, a GitHub action that you would run. Mm -hmm. So you would stop this decoupling. The 
Only problem that will rise is you will have to continuously update that GitHub check as you change the code base. Um, but that's a very fun thing to solve. I'll talk to you later. Sure. <laughs> okay, well, I have multiple people who want to talk. So I'll talk to you that's as great. well. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank that's you. It.